Hi, welcome back to Educator.com. This is the lesson on metabolism and nutrition. So with the basics of metabolism, uh, the word metabolism is often misused by people I've talked to. Um, usually people just talk about metabolism in terms of, oh, she's so lucky, she gets to eat whatever she wants, her metabolism must be really high. There is truth to that statement, but uh, people only think of metabolism as uh, keeping weight off or metabolism the other way, uh, gaining weight. But metabolism, the actual definition of it is that it is the sum of all chemical reactions within an organism. So it includes all the breakdown of nutrients that, that you need to do through digestion and all of the building of molecules that you need to do to maintain your body and stay healthy. So metabolism involves a basic formula that would be catabolism plus anabolism. So the catabolism part is the breakdown of organic molecules. So every time you break down a sugar that you've eaten, uh, a lipid that you've eaten, which is a fat, uh, a protein that you've eaten, that's a catabolic kind of reaction and it would involve uh, the release of energy. Anabolism is the opposite. It's the synthesis of new organic molecules, which typically requires energy and energy input to get those things linked together. So when you build muscle proteins, um, when you make glycogen, which is a, uh, a sugar storage molecule that's uh, mostly found in the liver, those are anabolic reactions. Um, so the ana anabolism part, what are you doing it for? Well, it's for structural maintenance and repairs, um, for support of growth. So as you grow, of course, you need to build uh, more molecules. Uh, for secretions, um, you need to build hormones, you need to build secretory products uh, that you're going to be letting go uh, through glands. And then for nutrient reserves, like I just mentioned earlier, glycogen. Um, if it's been hours since you've eaten, you can release sugars from that giant storage molecule that we call glycogen, uh, and that gets you through until the next meal. The way that I remember the difference between catabolism and anabolism is I remember the term anabolic steroids. So if you follow sports especially, you hear about anabolic steroids uh, that athletes will use to um, bulk up their mus musculature a lot more than they could uh, naturally without it. And the reason why it's an anabolic steroid is uh, it is a molecule that um, mimics testosterone and it allows them to have a lot more anabolic development of their muscle tissue. They are, they are building a lot more muscle proteins than is natural. So anabolism, anabolic steroids, uh, the building up of organic molecules. So we look at nutrients that we take in in our diet. Um, there are four major uh, organic compounds uh, in terms of looking at them and, and, and their structural differences and what they're for. Carbohydrates is one of them. They're also called sugars. Lipids, also known as fats. Proteins, uh, one of the more important ones. Uh, and they're all important, but uh, proteins make up the majority of your um, solid matter. If you took all the water out of an organism, the next most abundant substance is going to be protein. Uh, extremely important for cellular uh, structure and functionality. And the nucleic acids. You can't deny the importance of nucleic acids. That's DNA and RNA. Um, and it's interesting to you know have that under nutrients. Um, but anytime you eat um, animal tissue, uh, plant tissue, even if it's dead you're going to have these molecules in there that you are also uh, going to consume. And you can break down those nucleic acids to make uh, your own uh, nucleic acids in terms of stringing together new DNA, new RNA. Uh, vitamins and minerals. Vitamins, definitely also a, an organic compound. Uh, the reason why these are separate is vitamins are those um, those molecules that you don't have the ability to make enough of them on your own. Uh, you do have to take them into your diet. Um, for instance, if you stop taking in um, vitamin A uh, early on in your life, that could cause your eyesight to suffer. Um, but people who have enough vitamin A in their diet, they may gradually uh, need glasses, but in terms of their eye health, it's going to be uh, maximized by having enough vitamin A. So you do have reserves of vitamins typically in your body, but if you don't take them in, in your diet, you're going to run out. And then minerals. Uh, we'll cover these towards the end. Minerals uh, you get from electrolytes, stuff like sodium, potassium, etc. Oh, and before we move on, uh, this picture right here, if you're wondering what that is, these are uh, a kind of packing peanut. Like if you got a, a big box with something shipped to you, instead of using styrofoam peanuts, these are actually made of starch. So this is entirely natural. Um, you could eat them 
if you wanted to, it's kind of like uh, um, those puffy cheese snacks without any flavoring. Um, but yeah, completely natural, um, uh, a biodegradable uh, replacement for styrofoam packing peanuts. Carbohydrate structure. So we just talked about packing peanuts made of carbohydrates on the previous slide. Carbohydrates, these are sugars. And the interesting thing about the name carbohydrate is that when you look at the carbon atoms in one of these molecules, it's surrounded by water, H2O, H, and OH. So together, this is water. Together, this is water. Carbo, like carbon, hydrate, like water. So it's an easy way to remember the structure of a carbohydrate. And this is the typical basic sugar structure uh, in, in terms of a little ratio. Um, N is some variable, so we could put six in there. Okay, so for every six carbon atoms, you're going to have twice as many hydrogens and the same amount of oxygens as carbons. Uh, we could put an eight in here. We could put a hundred in here. Um, any integer uh, will work. So um, you can have slight variation of this. Uh, depending on the precise sugar you're talking about, but typically, more often than not, you're going to see this ratio. So if you counted these up, you would see that. If there were six carbons, it could be glucose. Um, if there are um, twice as many, you're going to get something like a disaccharide, uh, which is like two little glucoses or monosaccharides put together. You're going to see the ring or linear form. Um, this is the ring form down here, of course. It, it looks like a little ring. Uh, this would be known as a hexose sugar because it has six sides. Glucose is a hexose sugar. This is the linear form. You tend to see the ring form more often in the human body. Uh, it's more stable molecularly than the linear form, but you, you can occasionally see this. And the way you go from linear to ring or vice versa is carbon number one would connect to carbon number six, and the, uh, the, the double bond here would actually go away when you make uh, that connection. Um, carbon makes uh, four bonds. If, if you took chemistry, you know that carbon likes to make four bonds. That's why uh, with every carbon here, you're going to see four little lines around it, whether it's a double bond or single bond. Over here, another way of writing this is the H could be sticking out here, a little hydrogen, hydrogen sticking out here, and then the OH or hydroxide here. But this is a shorthand version. Speaking of shorthand, when you look at this ring form, uh, this is classic organic chemistry. Every corner here that's not labeled as O is carbon. So there's a carbon here, carbon, 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 carbon. And what they're leaving out is the H. It's just implied that on the other side of this OH is going to be an H. On the other side of this OH is going to be an H. Uh, same with over here. So if you're wondering why is there uh, stuff missing, that's why. So monosaccharides are single sugars. Glucose is the classic one. Uh, disaccharides is a, is a double sugar. So we could connect these two glucoses to make something called maltose. Maltose is a disaccharide. That's where you get malt sugar from. And the way it happens is uh, you make a glycosidic linkage which is just a fancy term for saying a bond between uh, two monosaccharides. And the way you do that is through a dehydration synthesis or dehydration reaction. And the way that I remember that term is all you need to do is take water out. That's why it's a dehydration. So here's an H. Here's an OH on the next sugar. When these two leave together, H2O is gone. So that's why it's dehydration. And what you're left with is this oxygen. So if I then erase what has, has left effectively, the water is gone. The way that you get this glycosidic linkage is through that, that oxygen connection. So you're going to have carbon connected to oxygen and then connected over there. Now the angle, because of this drawing, is not precise, but um, that's what you're going to see as a glycosidic linkage, is you're going to have this oxygen atom linking up the two neighboring uh, sugars. So a disaccharide um, includes maltose. Fructose is another one, um, which you're going to find in, in fruits. Uh, there's a lot of other disaccharide names, but those are a couple. Polysaccharides is when you have bigger sugars. You keep putting little sugars strung together, and you're going to eventually get things like starch. So, so examples of polysaccharides. Starch, which is the way that plants uh, store sugars. You also have glycogen. Glycogen is how we store sugars uh, in our liver and, and muscles. Um, starch and glycogen, both made of lots and lots and lots of glucoses. It's just the way that the glucoses are bonded together is slightly different in terms of um, the way the, uh, the, the glycosidic linkage looks. And then 
Another good example of a polysaccharide is chitin. I know it looks like chitin, but... Chitin, uh, you find that in the exoskeletons of arthropods and also in the cell walls of fungi. Um, you also can use chitin to make uh, surgical threads that you can um, you know, sew up something sur surgically and they actually will dissolve. Um, those, those chitin threads will decompose eventually, uh, which is kind of cool. So dehydration synthesis is how you get two sugars together. The opposite, like if I wanted to break these two sugars apart, is called a hydrolysis. And that's made of hydro and lysis. Hydro means water. Lysis means a breaking apart or splitting apart. So water splitting them apart. And it's the opposite of that dehydration reaction we just went over, that if water left to connect these two, water going in can also uh, do the opposite. It can separate them. Uh, sugars are water soluble. That's obvious. If you um, you know put pieces of bread in water, you see them dissolve pretty easily. Uh, pasta, you know, when we boil pasta or some other noodle, um, it's very obvious that sugars, which make up uh, the majority of pasta, it's it's water soluble. It it, it is a uh, polar kind of thing rather than nonpolar, which is the lipid side. And hey, the the purpose of carbohydrates in general is they are a really quick efficient energy source. Um, that's how we get the most of um, our, our energy molecules in our cells. ATP is, is kind of like an energy currency that fuels our cells and keeps us alive. And the easiest way to get that is breaking down carbohydrates or sugars.